All right, welcome to the Robert Show. It's day two at Gartner Orlando, and I'm super excited to be with Mary. Mary, uh, who's the head of product at Buff. Uh, super excited to meet you again here. I know we met at AWS reInvent. Today we are here, and uh, I've been seeing a lot of crowd coming at Buff's booth. I'm also excited to obviously uh, learn about uh, the different things, the different uh, conversations that you're having with enterprise leaders, customers, uh, prospects, and everyone here. So, welcome to the Robert Show, uh, and would love to know a little about yourself and the different conversations. Yeah, thank you, it's great to see you again. Um, so we're here at Gartner, it's our first time at the show. Yeah. Uh, we're meeting a lot of customers, Gartner analysts, people from the press like yourself, having a lot of conversations about streaming data and streaming data directly into the lake house which is super exciting. Folks are really excited about data quality and data governance and making sure that their lake yep. house data is well governed. Yep. Um, and then for me, I'm the head of product at Buff. I run all of our product operations and some go-to-market stuff, and I've been focused on Buffstream for the last year and a half or so. That's awesome. I've been hearing about Buffstream quite a lot now, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of curious to know, and I'm pretty sure my audience also wants to know about what is Buffstream. So Buffstream is a Kafka-compatible streaming data platform. Nice. Um, we take Kafka into sort of the cloud-native era. So instead of using local disks to store data, we persist data into object storage. So S3-compatible storage, Azure Blob storage, local storage solutions like MinIO or Ceph, uh, so that you only have to maintain one copy of your data since S3 does transparent yep. replication under the hood. So that reduces costs 5 to 8x. Uh, depending nice. on the flavor of Kafka that you run, because you're not paying for inter-regional or interzonal transfer of the data. Hmm, interesting. You mentioned about cost. I'm kind of also curious to learn uh, how does Buffstream address total cost of ownership as well? How do you kind of look at that aspect? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, uh, for folks who are really curious, we have some benchmark stocks on our website. Oh, nice. Uh, so I can, can share that with yeah, them. Yeah, that would be sure. great if you can share that with them. Yeah. That'll go deep into all of the aspects of TCO. Yeah. However, uh, for Buffstream itself, S3 is the basic cost uh, yep. leveler. So again, transparent replication under the hood, S3 stores one copy of your data, you don't pay for zonal or regional transfer. However, because all of the infrastructure for Buffstream, the metadata storage level layer, the data storage layer, and the data streaming layer lives inside of the customer's infrastructure, they have a lot of control over instance size, how they want to structure their Kubernetes cluster, and Buffstream is stateless, so it auto scales like a web app. Nice. So if you don't have load flowing through the system or you have a bursty workload, you can scale down to zero and then you're not paying for giant compute instances when you don't need them. Yeah, exactly. No, that's fantastic to you. I'm kind of also curious to know how do you differentiate Buffstream from other Kafka providers? How does that uh, kind of look like? Yeah, so interesting question, right? <laughs> yeah, interesting question. Obviously, there's a lot of providers in the market. Yeah. Folks are moving towards this object storage based architecture for yes. Apache Kafka. We have two to three main differentiators. Differentiators. One of them is that we provide a completely air gap solution, like mm. I talked about. So again, everything lives in the customer's cloud or data center. Nice. We don't report any metrics back to Buff. We don't report billing data. You output your billing data and then share it with us securely. So everything's secure for you. If you're in a regulated or compliance-based industry, you don't have to worry about data exfiltration issues. Right. We also, like I was saying earlier, store iceberg tables in S3. So we transform your data on the wire to parquet format and then store iceberg metadata on top. So you maintain one copy of your data for your Kafka operations as well as your lake house operations. Mm. And because the data is self-describing, you can run a query engine right on top of S3. So if you don't have a lake house use case, you can use something like Athena or Dremio right on top of your data in S3. Yes. One copy, further reducing your cost. Hmm. And lastly, our brokers have schema awareness and schema validation awareness. And so what they can do is they can look at your schema, understand, hey, is, or look at your data and understand, hey, does this data match a well-known schema that was in a schema registry? Okay, it does, let's move that through. Hmm. But it goes further than that. It can look at not just the shape of the data, but the content and enforce validation rules that your team has written, like, hey, this is a temperature field, and the temperature always needs to be between zero and 100. If it doesn't match that rule, it can reject the data so that you don't end up with bad data or null values or things like that in your lake house. Yeah, I love it. Oh, those are fantastic insights. Uh, thanks for sharing that in terms of how Buffstream is different from other providers. Yeah. Kind of makes a lot of sense, and I now I know why people are talking about Buffstream. So that's awesome, Mary. Awesome. Uh, 
quickly also wanting to know since we are here any exciting announcements uh, that you all have made because maybe I know it but uh, just for my audience as yeah, well. Yeah, so we have I can't say exactly what the characteristics are, but we have some benchmarks coming out this week. Okay. Uh, there are four multi-region and active active use cases for Buffstream backed by Google Cloud Spanner. Um, really exciting performance characteristics and cost characteristics for that. So keep an eye out on our website for those. And then uh, right now in preview, we have support for AWS IAM rules. So instead of using just Kafka's SASL principles, you can use your AWS service principles uh, to govern access in your cluster. And then we're also working on a preview of field level RBAC. So being nice. able to enforce RBAC rules on your schema that then pass through to the lake house and translate into like tag based access control or attribute access control or column level security in something like Snowflake Horizon. I love it. Mary, these are fantastic insights. So uh, I have one more last question of for course. you. And that is if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about Buff, uh, the Buff Stream, uh, I know you all keep announcing newer features. Uh, where can they do that? Uh, where can they learn from? e-books, white papers, whatever you all publish, which is the best place? Yeah, so uh, you can come over to buff.build, which is our company website. There you can sign up for our newsletter, read our white papers, read nice. customer case studies. And then the other thing that's very interesting is we had a independent distributed systems testing firm verify Buffstream's correctness and reliability. Nice. And so that was at Jepson, and you can look at our report on jepson.io. That's fantastic. And if folks want to reach out to you, and where, oh, which yeah. is the best place? Uh, they can reach me at mcatrelli at buff.build. <laughs> awesome. And LinkedIn as well? And LinkedIn as well. Okay, awesome. So you all know where you all can reach out to Mary and uh, learn more about Buff. Mary, such a pleasure chatting with you and uh, can't wait to see all the announcements that are coming up. Yeah, great to see you and hope we run into each other at more shows this year. For sure. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today.